In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to achieve this animated wrinkle effect that you see in games like Red Dead Redemption on the horse and on Arthur's Close. I will be using this free City Sample Crowds Marketplace Asset Pack that you can get from the Unreal Marketplace made by Epic Games. And here I'm creating a new Unreal Engine project based on the third person template. Okay, so here I've created a new project based on the third person template. And I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new folder to hold our work in. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is open the city sample crowd folder. And inside of there, I'm going to type in jeans. And I'm just going to grab these jeans right here. And I'll make a copy of them and put that inside of the main folder here. Uh, and here you can see it's telling me that I'm missing some different settings. So I'll go ahead and enable those. And it requires a restart, but I'll worry about that later. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to open up our third person character with our mannequin here and I am actually going to clear this out because we're going to put the jeans in the place of it but before we do that we need to assign the skeleton for these jeans over to our third person mannequin skeleton from the um, from the template and it'll add a few bones too. So just say OK. And I'll go ahead and save all. So that'll save the bones inside of the skeleton. And then now I'm going to drag those jeans right into here. Um, Okay, it's complaining that it hasn't saved yet, so I'll save. I think if it keeps complaining about it, you can restart the editor and that should fix it. So I might end up doing that, but for now, okay, so you can see these jeans are working. Let's just go ahead and play and make sure it works. Okay, cool. Um, so in order to get a better view of the wrinkles, we'll need to bring the camera in, set it to like, maybe like a hundred, move it down a bit. Cause I want to have those wrinkles at like the back of the knees. So let's try this out. Okay, that's good, but the character is moving too fast. So I'm going to come in here and lower the max walk speed for the character. Set it to like 120 and see how that goes. Okay. That's a lot better. So next, back in our main folder, I'm going to create a new material. And I'm just gonna call that M underscore jeans. And we'll be using this new material for these jeans that we copied over. So we'll go ahead and open up those jeans and then drag it over. And I want to go back and our 
our city sample crowd folder and drag over a couple textures that we're going to use for the jeans material. So let's type in jeans again. And it's these, it's BTM jeans SLM D and BTM jeans SLM N. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy those over here to our main folder. And then I'll go ahead and drag those in. So for now I'll just go ahead and plug this one into the base color and then we'll plug this normal map into the normal. We'll hit apply and save. And when we come back, we should see our new jeans material. The next thing we'll need is a wrinkle map for our material that we will blend in and I found a free one on ArtStation that we can use. If you search for 70 cloth and fabric alphas, uh, you should be able to find it. I will also include the link in the description. So from those free samples, I'm going to drag in cloth number four. That will go ahead and create a texture for us and we will drag that into our material. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to add this height map data, this alpha map, to our normal map. But <clears throat> this is just grayscale so we need to convert this to a normal map. So in order to do that, there's a normal from height map. And what this will allow us to do is create a texture object, which I just dragged off from height map, and then I went to texture and texture object, and then it just created this here. So we can delete this texture sample, we don't need that. Uh, but now, this will be a normal. So if we wanted to, we could just go ahead and add these two together, which is definitely not going to be our final result, but it will show you now you can see here, you can actually see that wrinkle appearing. Now we will want to control the intensity of that wrinkle. And we'll want to even be able to do that at runtime. So I'm going to create a scalar parameter. And I am going to call that uh, wrinkle intensity. And we'll have that default to zero. We'll have it max out at one. And since we'll have a few different parameters, we'll just add this to a group called wrinkles. Now what we can do is we can multiply this wrinkle intensity parameter by the normal map. So I'll add a multiply node here. And I will connect these two. And I will also add a clamp node 
just keep the values from getting out of the 0 to 1 range when we do our multiplication. And here, uh, so it's currently at 0. Now if I hit 1, we'll see the wrinkle appears. And since this is a parameter, we can go ahead and do this at runtime. And we we'll want to do that by creating an instance of the genes material. And then you'll notice here, in the instance, we have this wrinkle intensity. And so in our genes, instead of using the M genes material, we will use the instance instead. So we'll drag that on there. And then here, in the instance settings, if we go back to our genes, you can see here, I'm already getting the wrinkle, and I'm adjusting the slider. It's coming in and out. So our next goal will be to have some more control over where these wrinkles show up. And in order to do that, we'll have to mask, uh, we'll have to create a mask over the area that we want it to show up in. Okay, here we are in Photoshop, and we're going to create a mask over the top of the jeans texture. And in order to do that, we will create a new layer. Call it uh, Wrinkle Mask. And we want to completely fill it up black. And then we will lower the opacity so we can see what we're doing. And then over here in the channels, I'm going to use one channel for the left leg and another channel for the right leg. Uh, so we'll start by painting on the red channel. And let's lower this opacity a little bit more so I can see where these wrinkles are. Okay, that's a little better. All right, so we're going to we're going to paint right here around the knees. And this will be the back of the knee where we care more about the wrinkles showing up because that will be the part that's getting bent the most while the character is walking. Okay, so there's our red channel. Now we'll come over here to the green channel, turn off the red channel, and select green. And we'll go ahead and do this knee. And if we come back here to all the channels, you can see we have both the red and green channel masks created. So back in the material editor, after exporting this layer as a PNG and dragging that into uh, the uh, Unreal Editor, I'm going to drag that into the material editor. Quickly before masking, I want to control the tiling of the wrinkles. So I'm going to grab a texture coordinate node. And I'm going to add a multiply node. And I'm going to create a scalar parameter that I'm just going to call wrinkle tiling. And we'll set that to a default value of 1. And we will 
add that to our wrinkles group. And then we're going to plug the result of this multiply node into our coordinates here. So now we have wrinkle tiling and wrinkle intensity. To mask out the knees, we are going to use a linear interpolate node, which you can just type lerp here and grab that. And uh, for now, we're just going to use the red channel value to plug that into the alpha. Uh, that should be just the left knee for now, just to keep things simple at first. Uh, then coming here from the texture object uh, stuff we do, we're going to plug the result of that into our lerp. And then we'll plug the result of our lerp node into our add node, which will go into the normal. And uh, one thing we want to be able to control the intensity or the, I guess, amount uh, that each knee shows. So that way we can, you know, kind of range from zero to one and back. So I'm going to add a multiply node here. And we're going to create yet another scalar parameter. And we'll just call this one left uh, knee wrinkle uh, amount. And we will set that to a maximum of one. And we'll add that to our wrinkles group plug that into our multiply and now we'll plug our red channel into the multiply so we can have more control over our red channel here and go ahead and apply our changes now let's take a look and see how this uh, see how this works out so we have three parameters here that we can control um, Okay, so now got the left knee wrinkle amount at one, the wrinkle intensity at one, and I'm just adjusting the wrinkle tiling. You can see it kind of changes the size of it too, so we'll use like that for now. Uh, and let's. Okay, so you can see now we are controlling the wrinkles just on the left knee we're getting pretty close to being able to animate this. Before we start animating, I'm going to copy this left knee wrinkle amount and I'm just in the multiply node with it and I'm going to rename that to, as I'm sure you can guess, right knee wrinkle amount and we will multiply the green channel by that instead of the red channel and then we will add the result of both of these together and plug that into the alpha of the lerp node instead and that should now allow us to control both of them Let's kind of move over here, should be able to see it better. Okay, so you can kind of see some wrinkles appearing. Uh, one thing that we do want to do is I'm going to come up here and add a clamp node just to keep this value from getting out of control after doing all this uh, multiplication down here. And it should look a little better after doing that. Yeah, you can see now the wrinkles appear without um, 
without altering the look of the original base texture. They just kind of get added to the top of it. I'm going to open up the third person character blueprint. This one here. And for the mesh, uh, you can see that we are using the Quinn Anim blueprint. Uh, and Quinn is actually a child of the Manny Anim blueprint. And inside of the Manny Anim blueprint, if we look at the walk run state, we're using this blend space, this BSMM walk run. Well, that's for the male version, but we're currently using the female. So what we want to do is we can open up, if we click on this folder here where it says blend space, uh, you'll see it says content, characters, mannequins, animations, Manny. Uh, we're going to go up one level to animations and then click on Quinn. And uh, okay, so you can see here is the blend space for Quinn. Now, um, instead of going into the blend space, you can see the ones that we're using here. Uh, we're interested in this walk forward animation sequence. So that way, whenever we move the character forward, then we can go ahead and see the wrinkles up here. So inside of this walk forward animation sequence here, I'm going to add some anim notifies. Uh, and we're going to add one for the start for when each knee starts to bend when we want the wrinkles to appear. And then we'll add an end notify when it comes out of the bend uh, so we can have the wrinkles disappear. And we'll need to do that for each knee. So I'm going to uh, create a new notify track here. And um, let's go ahead and to the back view. And we'll just start here at zero. Uh, let's see if they're actually. Uh, Okay, so it looks like right here, this notify is showing when the right foot is planted. So you can assume when the right foot is planting, that means the left foot is bending the most right around this area. So see like right here, it looks like the left knee is about where we want to start the wrinkles. So let's um, add a notify and we will call this um, left knee wrinkle underscore start. Okay, and then when the left knee comes out of that, to about here, then we'll add another one, another notify. Left me wrinkle underscore end and then yeah we'll drag this over to right around here and I think to keep things a little bit more organized I'll create another notify track for the right knee so Let's find 
So here's where the left foot gets planted at this notify. We go back a little bit and we'll say about right here is where we want the right knee wrinkle start and I'm notified to begin. And then this is where the knee starts to unbend itself a bit. Come down here, add a new notify, and we'll call this one right knee wrinkle end. And we will just uh, drag this over to about that position. And then so now at this point, I think we can just copy and paste. Okay. So we can grab both of these, move these up over here to just about where the other ones were. About like that. And then this whoop, this one here will have to be moved over to about this spot. Maybe a little bit further. Okay, and so you can do the same with the right knee. So I decided to add two more notify tracks just to keep things a little bit more clean. Things are a little bit more spaced out here now. So the atom sequence is ready. Now we need to be able to reference these uh, atom notifies while while the game is playing. If we go back here into our ABP Quinn animation blueprint, um, if we right click and we go to add anim notify event, you will see that these actually show up here. So let's go ahead and grab the left knee wrinkle start. the left knee wrinkle end the right knee wrinkle start and the right knee wrinkle end So while this animation is playing, each time one of these notifies gets hit, say the wrinkle start, this will fire. So what we can do to test that, we can print a string, we can say left start, we can copy, paste, and we'll do left and we'll connect these and here we'll go ahead and press play and when we start walking you can see up on the top left it's printing out left start left end left start left end so instead of these print strings each time one of these M notifies fires, we need to get a hold of the material that is on the genes of our character. And to start with that, we actually need to get a reference to our character. And we would like to do that when the uh, animation blueprint initializes. We say um, event blueprint initialize animation, and then I have a plugin that automatically adds the call to the parent here. But if you right click, you can add call to parent function, um, which you will want to do. And when you do this, you want to use this. Uh, try get pawn owner uh, 
and we want to cast that to our BP third person character. So this will happen at the beginning of our anim blueprint and we will want to just go ahead and promote this to a variable. So now up here we have a reference to our player character and that allows us to call functions on our player character events and functions so that is what we will do next back here in our BP third person character blueprint if we go into our event graph we will want to create a uh, event for each time one of those anim notifies fires and uh, each time we'll want to control the wrinkle amount on that for each knee. So uh, let's create some custom events. Uh, we'll call this, we'll just name it after the anim notifies which were, let's see, we had left knee wrinkle start, left knee wrinkle end. We'll call this left knee wrinkle start. In order to control the wrinkles on our mesh, on our jeans mesh, with these events, uh, we first need to get a reference to our material. Uh, and so from our mesh, we can go get material. And if you look here, uh, element index zero is the same as your element index zero here on your genes mesh. Uh, so that's what we'll be using, this genes instance. And uh, from that, we will create a dynamic material instance. And that dynamic material instance, we can promote it to a variable. And we'll just call this um, MID for material instance dynamic and we'll just call that genes. So MID genes and going back to our mesh here uh, we will set the material. So now instead of getting we're setting and we will just plug our new um, dynamic material instance in. So we've essentially just made that instance a dynamic one that can be changed. Um, and we want to do this at begin play. So we'll just kind of splice into it like that here for now. Next, we'll grab a reference to that uh, new dynamic genes material and we want to set a scalar parameter by value and that will be the name of the scalar inside of the material so if we open up the material instance so if we go into main and here's the material instance we have this left knee wrinkle amount and right knee wrinkle amount. Those are the 
scalar parameters that we're going to be changing. So if we go back in here and type left knee wrinkle mount. So when we want it to start wrinkling, set that to one. And then we'll go ahead and move this out of the way a little bit. Give us some more space. Ah, come on. Ah, there's a weird bug. Sometimes it deselects. Anyway, we'll just work around that for now. Um, Okay, so when it starts, we want it at one. Now when the wrinkle ends, we want to set this back to zero. Oh, and we want to make sure this is plugged into all of those. Okay, and then for the right knee wrinkle amount, we'll need to change the parameter name to right knee. And change this to right knee and make sure the right knee when it ends will be at zero and plug everything in Uh, mesh need to be plugged in there. Okay, yeah. So miss that. So back here in our Quinn animation blueprint, uh, we are going to use this reference to our character to call those events for each one of these wrinkles. These uh, wrinkle you know, notifies. So let's say left knee wrinkle start. Okay. Left knee wrinkle end. Right knee wrinkle start. And right knee wrinkle end. So now when we come back into our level, we can see we can see there are wrinkles appearing. Now we can tweak these values and we can also we can hit hold control and L to move the sun down a little bit. That way we can get a little bit better angle. Let's try this again. Okay, yeah, you can see it popping in and out there. It's pretty fast though. Uh, so it definitely needs to be tweaked, but you can see it popping in and out. I'm going to space these out a little bit further. So we can see that wrinkle pop out a little bit more. Okay, let's see how that looks instead. Oh, 
Okay, so to tweak it a little bit better, I opened up the uh, skeletal mesh for the jeans. And in the preview scene settings here, I set the animation to our walk animation. And just scrubbing through the animation here, I was finding like where the knees were most bent. And uh, I, with this uh, M jeans instance here, I turned up the wrinkle amount so I could visualize where the wrinkles were. And uh, I played around with this wrinkle tiling and landed on this 3.946 number, which uh, is uh, pretty good. If you see if I move it around, the wrinkles change their location a bit. But that 3.9 number right there is pretty good. It's pretty easy to see both of them. As you scrub through the animation, you can see them. Um, but now, of course, we want to set these back to zero. And if we go back into our map and we hit play, we should be getting better looking wrinkles. Yeah, you can see those pop out a lot better. Now, to really make it look good, you could even have them fade in and out, but I'm not going to go into that in this because uh, this tutorial is already, I think, past the 40 minute mark. But you can see you have wrinkles now. So that concludes the animated wrinkles lecture. Thanks a lot.